All right, and here is the second half of our uh, set of problems. We've got a daredevil inside a cage as shown in the picture. Um, this daredevil, daredevil is going to be riding a motorcycle, and if they can get it going fast enough, they will be able to successfully negotiate a vertical loop. Um, now, you are not given any numbers for radius here or mass in this problem, so we will put everything in terms of uh, the radius r. So we're going to assume that this cage is of radius r, and we are going to be able to solve this problem using only that. We will not need the mass, as you found out last problem, which is really nice. So um, this is going to be negotiate a, a vertical loop. And the difference between this and the Ferris wheel problem is that, in general, at the top, we not only have a gravitational force down, or a weight force down, but because we're inside this cage, we will also have a normal force down. So uh, if we're inside the circle here, our acceleration is down this way. So both of these forces will contribute to our centripetal force, uh, and our net force, actually, for that matter. So our net force, when we're inside of this, will be equal to our weight plus the normal force. It's kind of like the yo-yo problem. It's weight plus the normal force. And that is going to be equal to ma, according to Newton's second law, which will in turn be equal to mv squared divided by r. Now, the minimum speed would be when our normal force was equal to 0. It's kind of like this idea of when we're weightless, right? So when our normal force is 0, that's the slowest that we can possibly go. That means that our weight then is the only thing causing our centripetal force, which is equal to mv squared over r. And again, our weight, remember, is mg. So mg equals mv squared over r. So v is going to equal, as our masses cancel out, yet again, v will equal the square root of g times r. Now, think about this. As I increase my velocity, as I go faster and faster, my my net force will increase, right, because I'll be having a bigger acceleration. Um, so as I go faster, I'll have a bigger acceleration. The only way to get a bigger acceleration is to have a normal force. So the faster that this person goes, the more contact they will actually make with the surface, um, which is actually good. So they want to go as fast as possible in order to get around this loop. So this stunt is actually incredibly safe if you're going fast enough. And if you're not, then you just fall down and um, bad things happen. So our final problem then is the conical pendulum problem. I have a 0.5 meter long pendulum in a circle, uh, swinging in a circle that I'm trying to help self-hypnotize myself with. Um, you're given that the angle between the cord and the vertical is 30 degrees, and I'm asking you to tell me how fast the string is traveling. Now, this problem is rather difficult, so let's take a look at what's going on. Here's my cord, and the cord is going to be traveling around in a circle. So here's my thing that I'm swinging around, a watch or something like that. And it's actually going to go around in a circle like this, and you can imagine that this is a 3D circle, and then come around like this. So it's traveling around this way and then coming back around. So that if you looked at the side of it, right, and you did like a, one of those long motion capture things, you would end up having an image that looked like this. It would make a cone. And it sweeps out a cone because the cross section at the bottom is a circle and the cross section throughout is a circle. But we are in fact sweeping out a cone. So that's what's happening here. We know that this radius here is 0 0.5 meters. And we know that the angle with the vertical, be very, very cautious here, the angle with the vertical is 30 degrees. Now let's take a look at our situation with the free body diagram. So at this point that I have shown here, I've got a tension force here, and I've got a gravity force going down this way, Fg going this way. So my Fg is equal to Mg, and my tension, I don't really know what it's equal to. Um, my direction of acceleration is this way, which means that not any of my gravity force is going to contribute to the centripetal force or the net force, but some of my tension force will. How much of my tension force? Well, I can break my tension into two components. I've got a Tx this way, and I've got a Ty going this way. 
So my net force, F net, right, because it's going around in the circle, it's not going up or down, it's going this way. So it's going, it, from my side view here, it's going here uh, and then back again, and then here and then back again. So it's going around and around and around in a circle. So my net force is only in the x direction here. So my net force is equal to my tension in the x direction. So because it's Tx, um, we now have to find out what Tx is, right? Because this is equal then to m times v squared over r if we bring in the fact that it's equal to ma, Newton's second law. So to find Tx, we have nothing else to go off of, except this little fact that it's not accelerating up or down. So that means that my tension in the y direction is counterbalancing my gravitational force. So that means Ty is equal to mg. And what's the relationship between Ty and Tx? Well, um, if this is my angle right here, this is my 30 degree angle right here, that means that the tangent of my 30 degree angle is going to be equal to my opposite Tx divided by my adjacent Ty. Now be very careful here, right? You're going to want to be worried about the fact that tangent is not y over x, but our angle here is with respect to the vertical. So you have to be very cautious with that. So that means that I can rewrite Tx as equal to Ty times the tangent of 30 degrees, or that it's equal to mg times the tangent of 30 degrees, right? Because Ty is equal to mg. So back over here, I can now say that Tx is mg tan 30, which will equal m times v squared over r. And so my m's cancel out here and here, and I'm left with the fact that v is equal to the square root of r times tangent of 30 r times tangent of 30. But now we have to be really cautious because even though I said that this r was 0.5 meters, that is actually not the r that we want because the r in mv squared over r represents this r right here. I'll call it, I don't know, r prime. And so how does r prime relate to r? Well, this is another triangle. So I know then that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to r prime, the opposite side, divided by 0 0.5. And so sine 30 is 0.5, so I have 0.5 times 0.5 equals r prime, or r prime is equal to 0 0.25. And so now I can take this over here, and I'm left with that v is equal to the square root of 0.25 times tan, ooh, just kidding there, 0.25 times the tangent of 30, which means that my velocity is a whopping 0 0.29 meters per second. So not very fast. That's all for these video podcasts here. Uh, don't hesitate to contact me during school if you've got any questions or send me an email. Thanks for tuning in.